Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. What is the Comex? Let's explore. It's a question that some of us have, even after reading about it for years. There's a lot that goes on in the Comex that has kind of behind the scenes, you know, talk about futures contracts and things that are really not tangible, considering that the COMEX tracks uh, a commodity that is very much tangible. And that is, I think, the thing that confuses many folks, especially me. When I think in terms of gold and silver, I think of what exists in the here and the now, not in the future or unregistered, unallocated and what have you. But let's take a look at this. I've talked about this in a recent video about the COMEX and, and what is the tipping point for gold and silver. And it all has to do with what happens there at the COMEX. So this is an article that comes to us from Shift Gold that I think provides some of the best explanation in simple layman terms. Uh, but even as such, I find it a bit tough to digest some of this information and really wrap my head around it. But let's go through it together and see if we can answer the question uh, from this article here about what the COMEX is. It's also known as the CME Group. I think that's a Chicago Mercantile Exchange. It's a global derivatives market that allows for trading in futures contracts. They allow two parties, long and short, to speculate or hedge in specific commodity markets and guarantee the transaction in the process. The majority of gold and silver is traded in paper form on the COMEX within the futures market rather than the physical market. And I believe therein lies some of the biggest problems and why some people feel there is manipulation that occurs, mainly price suppression because the majority of gold and silver is traded in the paper markets. <clears throat> in other words, we have a derivative market and a lot of that many people feel is not backed by the physical so each month a comex futures contract comes to expiration most contracts are rolled meaning the investor simply takes the gain or loss and rolls the contract to a future month sometimes investors stand for delivery but this is more expensive with a futures contract, the investor only needs to post a small amount of the face value of the contract known as a margin. So, for example, 15% margin. This gives the investor leverage. Instead of buying 100 ounces of gold outright, around $180,000, an investor only needs to post 15% of that, which is about $27,000, to obtain the same exposure. Already already we're getting into the weeds of this and it seems like, you know, that this doesn't just doesn't seem right. They don't have to, you know, they're not taking the risk, the full risk. In order to take delivery, the investor must post 100% by the first position date. Posting full margin and not rolling the contract indicates that the investor wants to take ownership of the metal. <clears throat> assumably, presumably, the physical metal. This means the short, the person on the other side of the contract, must deliver the metal to the long contract holder. The COMEX guarantees these deliveries each month. Once the metal has been delivered, it typically stays within the COMEX system and is classified as registered. And that kind of makes sense. So in other words, deliveries are essentially fulfilled within the system and they're marked as registered. Only registered bars can be delivered. A registered bar or simply a bar on eligible bar that has a warrant attached to it. So tracking the delivery data can provide insight into the physical demand for precious metals. When an investor takes delivery, it is presumed they are doing it with the purpose, considering the increased cost, which is storage and fees, along with posting 100% of the contract value. 
Now, a contract, from what I understand from the COMEX, is in two forms for silver. That's 1,000 ounces and 5,000 ounces. 1,000 ounce bars are the physical. Perhaps you've seen images of those. In fact, some bullion dealers actually have sold those 1,000 uh, ounce bars, which have a f very high purity, but not necessarily completely, you know, 999 or 49 is fine. They may be very close to it, and they may not weigh exactly 1,000 ounces. I mean, like 984 ounces or 1,002 ounces. Because it's somewhere along a range there. It's pretty interesting how that works. And there, um, some of those bars um, could be uh, made in China. Uh, there isn't, it just, you don't know, you don't know exactly where they're going to come from. And while there could be multiple reasons for taking delivery, um, a bank run could ultimately manifest as a run on the metal of the COMEX. <clears throat> in other words, if everybody wanted to take delivery at once, that would be a bank run, essentially. So if you look at historic deliveries, and we'll look at that again in another chart here, in 2019 and accelerating in 2020, more contracts have been standing for delivery. And you can see here from the chart below, if this trend continues or even accelerates, the effect on the price of gold and silver could be significant as suppliers are forced to source actual physical metal rather than settling in cash or using an existing COMEX warehouse stock. And this is the gold and silver deliveries. And we can see that there's been a really much of a squeeze for gold and in a sense more so for gold and silver we've seen in recent years. <clears throat> so now let's get into the warehouse stock here because really what is it about? It's about eligible versus registered here. So another data point to track and monitor is actual physical metal held by the COMEX, known as stock data. Metal sits within the COMEX system with a number of holders. The stock is categorized as either registered or eligible. For gold, there's a new category known as pledged, which appears to be another uh, categorization of registered. The metal has been pledged as collateral. For simplicity, outside of this report, pledged will be bucketed under registered. <clears throat> so you get another set of uh, confusing terms here, but eligible essentially means that the metal is stored in COMEX warehouses, the physical metal, and conforms to I exchange standards. <clears throat> it is being stored in the COMEX warehouse for a private party but it is not available for delivery to contracts because it does not yet have a warrant. Okay, registered metal means that the metal bar has a warrant registered and is fully available for delivery to longs who stand for bullion delivery. Eligible metal can become registered and vice versa. And they provide other links. I'll post a link to this article in the comment section below if you want to or in the description below if you want to explore it further. Uh, but these charts below show the historic trend of total warehouse stock of gold and silver broken into registered and eligible. As can be seen, similar to delivery data, 2020 proved a pivotal year. As delivery surged, the COMEX warehouse stock surged. 2021 has been slightly different, although delivery volume has fallen off some, the warehouse stock has taken a 180 degree turn and has been declining in 2021. Yes, it's pretty alarming. This is things that could lead to this tipping point. Gold saw a parabolic move early in 2020 when stress was put on the physical market. This caused the CME to change its rules and allow more stock to come into the system. And so here we can see the eligible, the registered, and we don't see anything pledged here because I think they moved that together in with the registered. Of course, down here, they show the pledged here and what's pledged. So gold saw this parabolic move in 2020 when stress was put in the physical market. And there you can see it in this chart. Wow, pretty amazing. Now, what are stock versus deliveries? When a contract stands for delivery, it is paired up with a short to deliver the metal. One party issues the metal to stop, which gives the name 
to the daily issues and stops report. When this happens, the short transfers the ownership of the warrant on the registered bar to the long holder. Most of the time, contracts standing for delivery result in money moving around within the COMEX system. And that's kind of the thing is, is tracking these things in the numbers that we see. It's metal moving uh, within its own system, uh, which may seem alarming to see the amounts move back and forth, but it kind of stays within the system. <clears throat> While the COMEX has steadily increased its stock in recent years, deliveries do not tie neatly to increased to satisfy deliveries or decreased, which are clients removing their metal from the COMEX system stock, as the two charts below demonstrate. So um, change in stock, we can see, was down <clears throat> in 2020, and annual deliveries was up dramatically. And then yearly delivering a stock change, annual deliveries compared to year-over-year -year change in stock, we can see here, change in stock dramatically moved up in 2020. And really, to me, it would be better explained as inflows and outflows into the system itself, into the COMEX system. It's important to watch both deliveries and movement of warehouse stock. Deliveries indicate parties wanting to take ownership of physical metal, making the metal eligible, where stock shows metal entering and leaving the COMEX system. In a true run on the system, deliveries would increase and stock would also decrease. This data will be analyzed in these reports at least once a month. So we have major and minor months. In fact, I talked about that in the previous video that uh, about the tipping point for gold and silver. And this kind of is a precipice to uh, what was talked about there. One final important detail is a difference between major and minor months. Gold and silver alternate major and minor months. Major months typically see open interest, the number of contracts open, 100 times higher than minor months. While more contracts are typically delivered in major months, a much larger percentage of contracts stand for delivery in the minor months. There's far less volume in the minor months, so traders typically use the major months to gain exposures. Uh, individual specifically wanting delivery do not care as much between the major and minor months. Goal major months are February, April, June, August, October, and December. Silver major months are March, May, July, September, and December. January and November are minor months for both metals because they bookend December, which is a shared major month. And so there is some other information that you can look here. There's the COMEX CME group that shows you a year-to-date deliveries and the like, delivery notices here. And it's just really a bunch of numbers on a PDF, uh, really bland, but making sense of all this. And who has it? <clears throat> the securities, Marex, BMO Capital Markets, and uh, what have you, year-to-date. It's interesting stuff if you can make sense of it. But even after going through that, I don't know that I can fully wrap my head around it because of all of the complexities in it. So if we look at this, uh, this is a, um, a site that, shows i can reload it here it's a little slow and gives you some uh, idea of the deliveries uh, historical deliveries it's a kind of a repeat um, of what we had seen of, uh, with the with before so here's a delivery summary we can see the aggregate open interest and uh, gold trade futures rolling 20-day volume and the like and here is obviously, this is an anomaly here, what's going on here. Making sense of this data is um, certainly out of my pay grade. Here's historical silver deliveries by year. A little bit more easier to understand, I think. Contracts standing for delivery. And you can see that already in 2022, uh, we've already beaten some of these other prior years. Um, before the madness that began in 2020. You know, and that's just it. There's a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace. And uh, and it's reflecting in the COMEX. So there you have it. Uh, pretty interesting uh, stuff about the COMEX. Again, a lot of it, even after going through that, uh, it gives some understanding, but it's still not completely... Um, 
there's still a lot of complexity there. And interpreting that data, I think, is something that uh, is very difficult, very difficult. And and so, therefore, people can make uh, the data that comes out of the COMEX, um, they can misinterpret it. And I think it's often misinterpreted many times. But nonetheless, let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, that gives us some idea of the COMEX and what goes on there. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.